I'd like to thank ACAMP today for inviting Simbet to be part of this, and I'd like to thank all of you for coming today. Uh, Simbet Corporation makes solid state batteries. Um, I was looking at the presentation and realizing there's not a good representation of how big these are. So on this business card, you can see these small black squares, perhaps even way out there. Those are our batteries. This is the size of our batteries. A uh, little bit brief history of Simbet. We were started in 2000. Uh, we licensed Department of Energy Technology in the United States. Our technology came from the Oak Ridge National Labs. It was developed in the early 90s. Uh, it was uh, originally developed on film, a deposition of uh, solid state materials on film. And, uh, but we were the first to commercialize this. Uh, we were the first to co-package thin film batteries. Our batteries are included with other chips in the same package right now. Uh, we, our second generation is released, and we make these ourselves. We have our own captive fab. We're based in Minnesota. We have very well-protected IP. Uh, you can see who our investors are over here on the side. We're privately owned right now, but uh, Intel, Texas Instruments, Dow Chemical, and Perseus Capital just completed the third round of our financing. Uh, we raised about $30 million at the end of 2009 when not too many people were getting money. Uh, we have a very experienced management team, and we are right now rapidly uh, expanding our production. The, uh, I want to talk a little bit here about the problems or the, uh, the needs. Current battery solutions for low power electronics uh, are costly. They require replacement. They're large, uh, and they're not embedded. When you think of button cell batteries or uh, AA's or AAA batteries, even capacitors, uh, their size is not conducive to making very small products. Um, Embedded self-power sensors lack the solution, and I'll talk a little bit about this as we go into this, but the notion of wireless sensor networks often overlook the idea of how you would power those. Uh, and then embedded microgrid power is an emerging trend. Again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Simbet makes Enerchips. Um, they, we state a 10-year solid-state energy source embedded at the chip or the board level. 10 years is somewhat of an arbitrary number because we just assume in general that most electronic products don't last longer than that. Uh, if they do, these batteries can still accommodate that, but they're meant to never be replaced. Uh, we have 21 patents uh, existing right now and 29 more pending to protect the solid-state thin film batteries. Uh, you can see we make these on wafers. And that's what's most different. As they were made on film before, they're now made on semiconductor wafers with typical semiconductor processes and typical semiconductor equipment. Um, energy chips and energy harvesting uh, technology uh, enables innovative approaches. In, in my two and a half years with Simbet, I've seen some of the most remarkable applications that I could have ever imagined because of the power that you can uh, embed into devices which enable things that people could have only thought of in the past. Uh, this is the general process. Uh, you start with wafers. Uh, you end up with dye. They go into typical semiconductor packages. Uh, they'll go into a uh, surface mount machine. These are put on a board at uh, reflow temperatures. So remember, this is a battery, but it will go through a reflow process, just like any other chip. And then the final assembly into a PC board this is what we have right here, and that is our solar energy harvesting board, which I'll talk a little bit about more in a second. The uh, thrust of uh, Simbet's business in the Enerchips has was initially aimed at uh, backup power to replace coin cells and supercaps. Um, what has happened in the last two or three years is energy harvesting, micropower type applications where you are harvesting ambient energy and uh, powering other chips. Uh, the one issue with ambient energy is, is what do you do when it's gone? And that's what we do. We add reliability into that equation. We uh, process that energy and we store that energy until the transducer comes back and recharges our batteries. Uh, I'm going to go through about 10 slides, so I'm not going to say much about this here, but I'd like to just point out the uh, technology trends and drivers that have uh, lent Simbet's credibility into the market now to make practical solutions for things. Starting with the uh, semiconductor power reductions. When Simbet came into existence, the idea of very, very low power electronics that could work on a 50 microamp hour battery uh, really didn't exist. Uh, we've been betting on the come, if you will, that the day would come when the industry trends that have always been there 
would catch up to the, uh, uh, the capability of our batteries in terms of power requirements and make ours a practical solution. And you start in 2005, this, this list of customers is in, by no means representative of the numbers out there that do it, but it would give you an idea that this trend has continually gone down further. Uh, things that work in standby currents of under a microamp are very prevalent in the market right now. A uh, real-time clock, for example, might work between 150 nanoamps and 200, 300 nanoamps. So they'll operate in these types of realms. There's microprocessors out there now that sleep at 20 nanoamps. So these are remarkable numbers uh, in terms of w the power consumption of these devices and lend themselves to practical application of these very small batteries. Um, smart devices are now everywhere. Nobody thought about a smart refrigerator in the past, something that would have a display on it that would tell you things about your house, that would tell you the weather, things like that. The entire smart home concept. Your car is loaded, oop. Your car is loaded with electronics right now. And this application here is for a, uh, a bandage or patch type thing that's taking data on someone, uh, maybe transmitting it wirelessly, and can be powered by things like our inner chips or energy harvesting in conjunction with that to, uh, to reduce the size and the effectiveness of those type of applications. Sensors are going to be everywhere. This is a slide from uh, HP at Semicon West earlier this year. And uh, we like this because it gives a, they, they use some uh, very large corporate type terms like uh, giving a voice to the planet, uh, an awareness of the planet. HP estimates that there will be tr uh, a one trillion sensor network in the next few years. And HP has made a major thrust into this market on account of that. Sensor technology is expected to be everywhere, to do climate monitoring, uh, to do structural health monitoring, um, smart grids and homes, earthquake warnings, smart highways, any number of things that you'd want to sense now, the sensor technology is coming into vogue to do that. Well, well. Uh, wireless is pervasive. Uh, the number of things on this slide that now work in a wireless environment that didn't previously uh, is rather amazing. And I reflect on the fact that uh, 15 years ago, having a 56K modem and finding a jack in an airport so I could download my email seems uh, rather anachronistic today. Uh, the idea of not having something in your pocket and being able to be communicated with when a Wi-Fi network goes down, everybody gets mad. So uh, the, the wireless world that we're very used to today is not that old. Miniaturization, uh, very clearly, that's the trend, uh, one of the attributes of the SIMBET die. Uh, this device right here, while it says it's a complete solar energy harvesting sensor, that's actually just the processing unit of that. Uh, that big piece right there is our battery. On top of that is a 32-bit 32 32 ARM processor that consumes one nanowatt. And on top of that is the solar cell that powers that until the light goes out and our battery takes over. When the solar cell comes back, it recharges our battery, and you have a very small sensor there with tremendous computing power. Uh, this is HP's accelerometer. That's approximately the size of our battery, too. So these are the si uh, size of things that you can come up with. Um, flexible microelectronics, and then the pill cam. I don't know if anybody's seen this before. It's about the size of the tip of your thumb. You swallow this. It takes pictures. Uh, there are uh, cameras on both ends of this, and as it tumbles through your body, it takes pictures of your digestive tract and allows uh, doctors to diagnose things like that. It contains two coin cells right there. That's what gives it most of its size. Um, advances that we've seen, uh, in, when you swallow it now, it takes about eight hours for that to pass through your body. But there are now technologies that allow doctors to guide that through your body in about 20 minutes with uh, magnets. So in, inductively, you can move this through your body and you can also charge it, which makes our inner chips a practical application for replacing probably 60% of the volume of that pill cam. And if you're someone that has to swallow that thing, you'd probably like that. Uh, integration. Uh, as it's a semiconductor process, uh, using typical semiconductor tools, presumably you could build a battery on a chip right next to the electronics that it's gonna run. Um, however, that type of integration usually takes quite a few years. Uh, our geometries are very gross. The uh, uh, geometries of higher level electronics are in nanometers right now. So there are ways to do that, but more practically, uh, you co-package these things. You do side by side, you do system in a package where you put passes and a chip and an inner chip, different things. Uh, you can stack these on top of each other. 
to save space that way. And we'll also sell them in die form. So you can do chip on board type applications, reducing the size even further. And then you can do an all-in-one package. In this case, there's a battery, there's a, a processor chip, there's a, a coil for inductive charging. All of that can be in a single tiny uh, semiconductor package. Uh, high reliability. We'll put this in terms of the things that you don't have to do anymore. You don't have to throw away millions and millions of batteries. Uh, you don't have the uh, chemical issues that you'll have with capacitors. This certainly speaks to the green aspects of our stuff. Um, in terms of the features, uh, we, can, we compare typically to super caps and coin cells in terms of what we replace. Uh, often in energy harvesting type applications, we complement uh, a cap, but you can also have a very small capacitor instead of a large one because you'll have the added capacity of our batteries. Um, I won't go through all these, but there are some things that we have uh, that are different from the others. They're always much smaller. There are no hazardous chemicals in ours. There's nothing to leak. There's nothing to explode in these. So uh, there's nothing to dispose of in the end that will cause an issue. Uh, Edit chips are eco-friendly. Um, right now, there are becoming many more issues in the market for transportation of batteries. There are limits on how many you can ship at one time, whether you can ship it in the system. Uh, laws that are coming into effect that uh, give you an issue in terms of how you will ship your product with a battery in it. Uh, they're we compliant. You dispose of these just like any other IC. So there's no, other, there's no special disposal requirements for our batteries. Um, and they are also REACH compliant in Europe. They contain no toxic or heavy metals. Uh, while it is a lithium ion battery, this is in a lithium cobalt oxide uh, where the lithium is contained. So there is no free lithium, there's no chemical binders or paste in there to, uh, to leak out or explode. So that's what makes this a very green product. Uh, this gives you an idea in terms of energy harvesting, the types of energy sources that are typically used to do energy harvesting and the typical voltages and outputs of these, the type of power that you can expect from a typical uh, um, energy harvesting generator. Solar is the most diverse. There's certainly many types to, to use in that. Um, but the vibrational, thermal, and notably the RF and inductive in, as a means to charge the devices uh, offers many new uh, product applications. Uh, we can reduce costs. And it's important to put in here the first cost and the life cycle costs. Um, compared to a, say, a 25 cent coin cell, our batteries cost more than that. But I like to stress to people that it's not a 25 cent coin cell if you have to pay someone to replace it. Uh, in the end, the product cost as you go down the line. There's no expensive service calls to replace batteries. Uh, our devices last the life of the product so that you never have to replace those. Uh, in the long run, these make a big difference in the total cost of the product. So in summary, um, Simbet Enterchips uh, are rechargeable batteries that are new and unique, clean tech and green tech devices. I capitalize though, those, although I'm not certain those are real terms, but I think everyone here knows what those mean. Uh, there are many significant market opportunities for Enterchip in many industry verticals. Uh, the medical industry, the uh, lighting and building control industry, uh, where energy harvesting can work uh, in order to enable new products. Um, the key technology trends that drive our customers' innovations are the ones I just went through. The types of things that uh, um, are typical in the microelectronic industry but now can be applied across many other industries also. And Simbet's product roadmap ex uh, expands on the internship technology. Originally we were a battery manufacturer. We also, well now we also do the energy harvesting side of it because uh, it's very difficult for an end customer to figure out how to use these types of transdu transducers and convert that energy. We saw that if we were going to sell batteries, we had to accommodate that side of it too. So as long as there's a transducer available, we'll show the end customer how he can use that power and manage that power and store that power. Thank you very much.